All right, so um, hello, you guys. Uh, my name's Neil Gompa. This also was supposed to be done with uh, David Duncan from the Fedora Cloud Working Group, but he's not here, so I'm just giving this myself. Um, but he did help make this presentation, so his name is still on the credits. Um, I am chair of Fedora KDE6. So who are we? Left side is David, who is not here. Right side is me, who is here. You can see all the stuff that I do. Kind of importantly, I am, you know, chair of Fedora KDE. I'm a member of the Fedora Cloud Working Group. I also am involved in KDE Upstream. I'm a co-host of the Pseudo Show podcast. I'm also a consultant of my own company, Velocity Limitless, around stuff like this. Um, and I do a lot in Fedora and CentOS and, and so on. So let's talk about desktops in the cloud. So virtual desktop infrastructure. Uh, come on, make the thingy go away. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. So virtual desktop infrastructure. So desktops on demand uh, are really a concept that's been around for a really long time. Um, I think, really, I think when you think about how people use computers at the very beginning, this was kind of the way that they did it. Even if it wasn't necessarily desktop, it was usually dumb terminals connecting to mainframes and doing command line or interactive access through that. Um, we've had this pendulum swing over the years, back and forth between local and remote and things like that. We're kind of in a pendulum where moving towards people want to have things remote for a variety of reasons. Um, virtual desktop infrastructure is the term that's often used to represent this kind of thing. Um, the main benefit of doing this is that it provides you a secure, easy way to do pretty much anything um, without really any fear of, you know, permanent loss of productivity, right? And then so, and it can be useful for cost optimization, especially around um, certain types of uh, workloads and environments where giving physical machines that are sufficiently powerful all the time can be very, very expensive. Because uh, like I like to think of like workstation scientific workloads and things like that where you're just simply not going to be able to afford to give a huge group of people those resources all the time by purchasing them machines and shipping to them. Plus it creates security risks and all kinds of other things. Um, and nowadays with the cloud you being the center point of development you know, it becomes very attractive to be able to do development in the cloud for the cloud. And if you look at what's been going on on that front, it's mostly been around web-based development, but it doesn't reach the potential that you have with having the real tools and having the real environment to work with it. And if you look at the trends, it kind of bears this out. People are increasingly using Linux or requiring or demanding Linux environments for doing professional work environments because it is just too bloody hard to do all this stuff on other platforms. I have been a developer on all three operating systems over the course of my lifetime, and Linux is the most flexible and often the easiest platform to do real development across a wide range of disciplines because pretty much everything is out there for you. And in other platforms, it's just, some, it's just sometimes restrictive or difficult or, or complicated. And so, with all of that said, like if we want to use real development environments, you want to have a real desktop environment, so let's talk about Fedora KDE in the cloud. And Fedora KDE, we have to start with Fedora KDE, which is uh, delivered in Fedora by the Fedora KDE SIG, which is a special interest group that packages and maintains the Qt and KDE stack for Fedora, as well as Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS since RHEL 8. Uh, we develop and maintain variants of media, such as the Fedora KDE Spin, the Fedora Kinoite, and the upcoming Fedora KDE mobile variants. And you can see, Fedora loves KDE. We've even got a fun, a fun brochure website about it. So one of the things that we do as part of the Fedora KDE um, team is that we, we have a commitment to provide the latest KDE technologies to our users. And so we continuously update the KDE Plasma stack in Fedora, even in stable releases, to the very latest available KDE major version. Uh, of that particular major version. So for example, in Fedora 40, we have Plasma 6. It started with 6.0, it is now at 6.13. It'll be at 6.14 within the next couple of weeks. Um, Fedora 39 was on Plasma 5 and it's at Plasma 5.27 something or other. I forget what the minor version is, I don't care. Uh, 
Yeah, it, but like we try to have, in all seriousness, we try to have the, the latest facts available for us. And that's also true for the KD Plasma offered on enterprise Linux platforms. If you want to use KD Plasma on um, CentOS Stream 9 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 or some derivative thereof like Alma Linux, you are going to have the very latest KD Plasma 5 just like you would in Fedora 39. Uh, and then when CentOS Stream 10, Apple 10, all that other stuff, that you know, they're talking about in some of the other rooms and stuff, we're going to have the very latest KD Plasma 6. And so we enable that and provide it to the community and we also work with the KD community upstream. We work very closely with them to ma maximize the quality of our experience that we can provide to our users. So we've talked about KD Plasma, we, now we want to kind of come back to VDI and talk about VDI approaches. Um, there are two common approaches to VDI. The first is the nested rendering. So what I mean by nested rendering, it means that um, there is a custom stack that then boots up the standard stack on top of it and then redirects that stack over the wire through a custom protocol. Um, usually it's like some kind of custom X11 server that uses XNest or Zephyr or something like that to, to do it. Um, I think a popular one of this is like X2Go. That's, uh, that uses KDrive, which is a fork of the X11 server that then runs, uh, that runs XNest to then load the actual X11 desktop environment inside of it. Um, there's also um, others that do like a custom graphics server, then a, uh, an X11 graphics driver that does a fake card, a fake output, that then is then pipelined into that custom graphics environment to hack Xorg to run the desktop. Um, and, then some, and then the third one is a relatively new one, which is a custom Wayland compositor to run, on a Wayland, to run a Wayland compositor nested inside. And so if you nest the compositors inside, then you can just have protocol passed through and you can have a Wayland experience running, or you could run X11 inside of it and have the benefit of a very thin abstraction instead of having to have a very fat one like the first approach. Um, the benefit of this approach is that it usually requires very minimal software integration to work. The desktops don't have to be aware of it. You don't really have to do any fancy replugging of all the stack. The thing, it, it, it's very, it's not seamless. It's very isolated, but it does work. And a lot of things out there do it this way. Like you would, things that you wouldn't think do it this way actually do. XRDP and XBMC, they are actually custom X servers that then run another X server inside to then boot up your desktop. VMware Horizon is, I recently had to deal with VMware Horizon, so it's fresh in my head. VMware Horizon has a custom graphics system that then uses an X11 driver to generate a fake output that then is pipelined over the network through a custom protocol. And BombGuard Beyond Trust is actually like a combination of the first two approaches. But the third approach is, is, is one that um, I've played with and I'll, I'll get to it in a moment. Um, so let's talk about the other kind of uh, VDI approach and that is using the desktop backend. So this is something that you're gonna see a lot more in the Wayland world because in the, with the move to Wayland, there's no longer a separate renderer to modify. So you don't have, for example, the X server that sits there as the big fat IO path, then has the window managers on top and all this other stuff. That's all squished together. The desktop is in charge of all of that. Um, as part of the graphics stack being integrated into the desktop environment or the window manager environment, you can also integrate the remote uh, the remote access method or the ver or the headless access method in there. So there's a couple of ways that this can work uh, in, in, in practice. So the first way is to use Wayland protocols. And so I kind of list out here the Wayland protocols here, X to image copy capture, which is brand new, um, X virtual keyboard, which is being proposed. These are replacements for WL roots equivalents. And then X transient seat, um, because if you're doing multi, if you're doing VDI, you need transparent, you need to have multi, multiple seats. You have to spin up a seat for every instance that's being connected. Um, WLR data control, which is for clipboard, and WLR virtual pointer, um, for kind of the obvious thing of you need to have a, a virtual pointer. Uh, you need a pointer that doesn't act, a pointing device that doesn't actually exist to be connected for remote access. Um, the other way to do it is through XTG portals. And this is a newer approach. Um, and it is pretty much restricted to only the ones that have full portal implementations. And that really comes down to KDE and, and GNOME. And so that's using the clipboard, input capture, screencast, and remote desktop por portals. You have to use all of them together to construct that environment. There's actually a few more portals and protocols that are missing from this to actually make a complete experience. 
For example, you probably want device redirection. That's not handled by Waylander, but it would be, there's an XTG portal for device redirect, for device pass through, and that would be also used for redirection. You would also want audio, input and output, to be piped through, and so that means um, whatever technology you're using needs to have a, to be able to plug into Pipewire uh, to be able to do that part, and things for cameras and stuff like that. There are portals for these as well, like there's a camera portal, there's an IO audio portal, and things like that. They all have to be wired up into whatever solution you build. Um, typically, this approach has a limitation in that you have to have the local session already running and being fully logged in. But there are example implications of this. I think one of the most well-known ones is Way DNC, but lesser known ones are KRDP, which I will talk about momentarily. Rust Desk and TeamViewer are other ones that actually do this. So most people don't know that TeamViewer is Wayland compatible. It works through the portal system. So if you are a user of TeamViewer in your corporate environment or in your personal environment, I know lots of people use TeamViewer personally to be able to like do remote assistance for their family or whatever. This is, it works with Wayland. You have to, you have to spend some extra effort to get things set up, but it, can, it, it works. Um, Rust Desk is the same way. Like it works the same, because of this, you know, um, portals actually require some in, initial interaction to tell it that it's authorized and then you can do it. Um, so the artifacts of kind of the work that we've been, that David and I have been doing around this kind of come into the form of two real outputs. The first is the Fedora Kiwi descriptions, which are where we make the definitions for building various Fedora images. And so we use this to be able to build the Fedora cloud image. Um, you can now build disk images for um, GNOME, and, or not for GNOME, for KD Plasma and for the KD desktop and KD mobile ISOs and things like that. Uh, and on top of that, you know, we have a Cloud KD Ansible example that we worked on that what it does is it can take an existing base Fedora Cloud Edition and it runs, running this playbook, it reconfigures it to be a KDE desktop. And so you can then use this, and what this thing includes actually is a way to use, uh, and you can see that this is running and we support Cloud KDE with x86 and ARM, so this is what AWS supports and what Azure supports, and you can absolutely do it. With that playbook, you can do this which is nesting a full KD Plasma session inside of Weston, running remotely over the internet using Waypipe. So what I did was I, I had Waypipe installed on both ends. I did a Waypipe SSH tunnel to the other end. And then I had this little tiny shell script that is actually included in the Ansible playbook and it will install that script that will start KD Plasma inside of Weston. So it is Quinn Wayland, on top of Weston, running with the Wayland backend, piped over the network to my local computer, and you now have a KDE Plasma session. Yes, so. No, a local view within a remote view that contains a local view that is a nested view. Yes, so to explain what the member of the audience said is, Plasma is running inside of Weston. Weston is being piped over the network. And that's using Wayland? Waypipe, so it's native Wayland protocol transfer. No specialness anywhere. So really at the end of the day, it's just, it's not even really know what the stuff is, but very much what's going on. Yeah, so the other thing that's neat about Waypipe and what makes this, so if you do Waypipe the quote unquote normal way, it's super slow because it will just send the buffers over plain. But Waypipe has a tac tac video flag and so it will, Trans it will encode it server side and then transmit it as a video stream back to you. And so it's way more efficient. Now there are pitfalls to this approach. For one, no clipboard connection because Weston doesn't support any useful protocols. It is a very bare bones compositor. And so it doesn't have the clipboard manager protocol so it can't forward the clipboard. Um, it also doesn't have, um, this, this method doesn't have audio redirection. It doesn't have device redirection. This is really, this was my first attempt at trying to figure out how to do the remoting. And it was a very interesting and successful uh, approach and I was actually inspired by having to debug terrible, terrible, terrible proprietary VDI solutions where I discovered that this had this common pattern of, oh, we run an X server, then run another X server inside to then run the desktop. It's like, well, I could do the same thing with, with Wayland, right? And so I did this with Weston and it turned out that that worked. Um, pit, uh, the other, but like, it's, uh, yes, Oh wow, I don't have a, much time. Um, all right, so that is how 
I first started doing it, has plenty of pitfalls, but it's a lot of fun, and it's also completely agnostic. You could do this with any Wayland environment. Yeah, I, I thought it was like, wait, how did I go from, <laughs> like, yeah, I've got plenty of time. Um, so yeah, I have this and it works and I've tried it with other desktops, but of course KDE is the one we're, we want to talk about because KDE is the best. So that's why we have this picture here. But I've, you can do this with any desktop that runs a, a Wayland, as long as the Wayland compositor supports running on Wayland, it will work. If it can't run on Wayland, as with the Wayland backend as in nested, then this approach fails. Um, Quinn supports this. I think Mutter does as well. Um, last time I tried, well, last time I tried this, it was broken on Mir, so that that's a whole special thing. But I think that it's fixed in the upcoming version that's supposed to be releasing soon. PM. Um, yeah. So uh, Matthew Kosrek in the audience says that it's being released today. <laughs> Yeah, Can you, sorry, cutting the release today, which, whatever that means. It is the beginning of the release. Branching for release candidates, we'll go with that. But I've tried this with a lot of different Wayland compositors. Most of them do have some kind of nesting Wayland uh, mode. Um, I was just surprised that Mir was not that functional, but all the rest of them were. I could have done this with X11, but the problem with doing it with X11 is then you get a nasty border inside, yeah. and then it looks stupid. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Actually, if Weston supported server-side decorations and, I, uh, and there was no way to turn it off or on, yeah. then it would have had a nasty border because Quinn will run, always runs when it runs wet net nested, it will, draw decor it will request decorations. Right. Since Weston doesn't support anything at all that's useful in this sense, um, it runs full screen and it looks like a normal nested desktop. But again, enough, enough about this. This approach was really the starting point to understand what it looks like to have it run remotely and how can you run it in a network efficient way. The neat thing about this is that you can really play with the internals of this, but you also have a big downside in that you can only run it once. Because if you kill the desktop and don't log out and don't reboot the machine on the other end, you have a whole bunch of zombie, you have a whole bunch of zombie processes that make it so uh, you can't launch KD Plasma again because this is not a clean shutdown if you click the X button on that. It just is kind of, you're just ripping the Wayland socket out of the desktop. <laughs> so uh, it does not handle that very well. So there were enough pitfalls in this that it was not a viable approach to say, this is how I recommend everyone do this. But it is a fun toy. And if you want to do this with anything that doesn't actually support remoting, it's cool. And this is how you can prove to your friends that Wayland can in fact operate over the network, even in the most crazy ways possible. So now we talk about how KD Plasma's approach to headless is gonna be. So Wayland and RDP with 6.1. So if you get Fedora KD40, you know, at GA we had 6.0, um, but if you once you run an update, it will upgrade you to 6.1 and you'll have this new component called KRDP that you can install. You install KRDP, you can then configure it uh, and have a fully open source stack for cloud desktops in any and every cloud without nesting in Weston. So this operates like a fully native environment. Um, but let's have a little demo about this. Or maybe we already have been because this was already a remote desktop the whole time. And yes, I know this is GNOME, but you know this makes it. This is great for shock value. You get to see that it's it's a GNOME desktop. And actually, this is the virtual machine all the way at home, <laughs> which I'm using WayPipe to control from here. GNOME boxes on top of KD Plasma, w way, uh, using WayPipe connected over here on my laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so getting it to stay awake means that you, you have to tweak some settings to make it stay that way, but it totally can be done. One of the things that's kind of a pitfall with GNOME boxes specifically that I found while trying to develop this mode was that uh, if GNOME boxes decides that there's no activity and turns the display off, uh, KRDP disconnects. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a KRDP specific thing because it doesn't actually need to do that. Uh, 
Okay, uh, apparently this froze. Sweet, that means, uh, first of all, I'm going to do not disturb any of this. And yeah, so we'll go over here and you can see in the settings, And we'll go down and you see there is a remote desktop. And that is how I configured it in the first place. So we'll just full screen this real quick. Assuming that it will not be slow. And there you can see that this is, this is the local, quote unquote local console, remoted over Waypipe using GNOME boxes on the remote end connected back here. But this is how I configured the KRDP thing. So I created the user, had it all set up, and done all the things. So we'll get out of this for a second. And go back over here. We're just gonna disconnect this. And we're gonna reconnect it because that, that makes for great demo. I, I, I intentionally was stupid about this. There we go. And now I'm back on my RDP session. <laughs> so this is RDP. And then, yeah. So that was how I was able to have a fully, you know, come on, stop catching the, okay, whatever, fine. So this is, so this, if you want, if you're interested in helping out with this stuff, come to the KD SIG and uh, we can have fun making cloud desktops available everywhere with open source tech. Uh, and we can work with it and working with wonderful upstreams and partnering with other teams to make this stuff happen. So any questions? Hold on. Let's give him a microphone. So uh, my question, first thing is like my stepmother uses this every single day of her life when she's working. Um, not the specific software, but when you're uh, RDP into a system, does it need like a key or any kind of SSH key or a PPM key in file, or whatever? So KRDP requires you to generate or a provide PPM, it. PPM, PEM, that's what it is. Yeah, right. PEM certs, it's PLS certificates. Yeah. So if you don't have any that you want to let it use, you can have it create them for you. And then Ramina is the only RDP client for Linux that I have found so far that will actually use them properly. All the other RDP, by the way, the quality of RDP clients is pretty bad in Linux. Um, your best bets are the Microsoft Terminal Services client for Windows and Mac or Ramina. All the other ones suck um, in my experience. I, trying to actually do this demo was an exercise in frustration and finding out how low quality all of the RDP clients actually are. Mm -hmm. So it took a while to actually find one that worked for this. Yeah, it's like a yeah. You can say stuff into the microphone. Hello. Um, yeah. So I had another question, but I sure. have to think. Okay, so this KRDP RDP thing, mm -hmm. is that built in like sort of as a plugin or is that first class like in the compositor shell? Of it is a plugin to Quinn to, uh, to through the desktop portal infrastructure. Okay, but it's a separate process running on top. Yeah, of it's it. an out of process tool. But what it does okay. is it connects to, it connects to the KDE desktop portal, connects to the remote desktop, screencast, clipboard, all the necessary portals that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and wires it up for this. Oh, okay. So is there a chance if we on Mir, for example, exposed all the same portals? Yeah, you could use KRDP with it just fine. Oh, it it's oh, actually okay, not cool. desktop dependent. Okay, awesome. It's just yeah. called KRDP. Yeah. Uh, for what it's worth, a lot of things from KD uh, that we use to enhance and make the experience better for the for regular users um, actually work on other desktops. So, for example, um, a long time ago, we made a way to use XEmbed on Wayland called X, uh, XEmbed SNI proxy. And what it does is it creates a micro X, uh, X Wayland environment, runs the runs the the XEmbed applet in it. And then it copies it and generates a status notifier item for it so that you don't actually have to support XEmbed in Wayland. Um, another thing that we've done is we created a um, XWayland video um, 
X Wayland video capture relay thing, I forget exactly what it's called. And what it does is it allows X Wayland applications to be pipelined to the Wayland pipewire setup to be able to do screencasting. So an X X11 application can screencast a Wayland application or a Wayland desktop pipeline through this securely. Mm -hmm. X Wayland video bridge is what it's called. And this is the latest in that. KRDP is designed in such a way that you, it is even available as a flat pack. You could get yeah. it on FlatHub, and then and and it will connect to the portals, and uh, and you could just run it, and it'll work. Okay. The only desktop where I don't think it would actually work is GNOME, but GNOME's weird in and has their own implementation of this. Um, they have GNOME Remote Desktop, which has private infrastructure for being able to connect. It integrates with GDM, it integrates with Mutter and GNOME Shell, and does its own thing for being able to offer RDP and VNC support. Okay. Um, there's also KRFB in KDE, which offers VNC over the same mechanism that KRDP uses. So these things should work with any desktop that implements all the portal rec required portal infrastructure. Cool. Just have to implement all the portal infrastructure. Yeah, I guess if you, well, you know, you could, instead of doing GTK things for your for your miracle, you could use KD and Qt things in there and have a way more fun time. Sounds like a sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll first have to have it m with more stuff to work. Let's make it work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? All right then. I guess I'm done. <laughs>